In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Vox animated title. So it's really simple. I'm just gonna basically set up a new composition. You can have whatever settings you want for this one and then just hit okay. So the main part of this is creating the little animated titles. So we can do this by, by basically right clicking, creating some new text, and then just type out a letter that you're going to use. Now my settings that I'm using are over here on the side of screen, but they can be whatever you like. Now you're only typing out a letter because we're going to use this to basically recreate this effect for each of the letters. Once I've got that letter, I want to come up to layer and then down to pre-compose. And with that, what we're going to do is then create the background that goes in behind. Now, the best way I've found to do this is if you right click, then you can go down to the width here and basically just scale this right down. So for me, I just use 300 by 300 pixels and then my letter sits in like that. Now for this, what we wanna do is put in that background elements. Now what I've used here are just some scratch elements that I've dragged in behind and I'm gonna use these to basically recreate the letter. Now for these scratch elements, I actually got these from today's sponsor, Invito Elements, because they have hundreds of these effects and graphics that I can use for these different projects. Now you could go and find these on Google or something like that, but they won't necessarily be free and they won't also have a license that allows you to use them across all of your work. With Invito Elements, I can download any number of these different graphics and their one license covers them so I can use them in any of my commercial or personal projects. Now I'm just gonna line one up here behind roughly this part. Then with that layer, I want to then pre-compose that into its own composition. And to make them move around, what we're going to do is open up that composition. We want to select that layer and then go to the position property by hitting P. I'm gonna hold Option Alt on the keyboard and create a little expression here. Now the expression I'm using is wiggle, open bracket three comma 1000 close bracket. And this will allow us to create this effect where it's sort of moving around. Now you could scale this up to kind of get more or exaggerate that effect. And once you've done one, all you need to do is then just duplicate it, move it up, I can then bring in this other layer here because we don't need that. And with this layer selected, I'm then going to choose another layer here and holding Option or Alt on my keyboard, I'm just gonna drag that on and that's going to replace that layer. So you can see what we're doing here, we're just basically creating that effect of it sort of moving around like this. Now on top of that, I'm also going to create an adjustment layer and to this, I've added the posterized time effect and the brightness and contrast just to help make it a bit more contrast in, give it this effect. And the posterized time will make it a bit more stop motion like. So to get those, all you have to do is you can just come up to help and search for them, or you can go through the menu and then find them, just drag them onto that adjustment layer. So you can see I've just repeated this process in my original composition, and this is the effect that I've ended up with. Now I'm Ross, and this is Flatpak Effects. And if you're enjoying this video, then definitely consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're liking this sort of content, then definitely consider subscribing if you wanna see more content just like like this. Now Envato Elements has tons of these different graphics that you can use in your projects. So you don't have to just use this. So the great thing is they've got thousands of all of these different graphic templates that I can use. And then I can experiment by dragging and dropping them into my project and seeing how they work. Now Vito Elements is something that I've personally been using now for quite some time because it not only has lots of graphics, it's also got stock videos, video templates, music, sound effects, and all of these elements are things that I use on a daily basis. So you can see they've got tons of these different effects already as different graphic packs that you can just download and it's all included in your subscription. And if you use the special link in the description below, it'll give you 50% off an annual subscription. So now I've got that laid out. If I come back to my letter, what I can do with that is then set the track mat of that layer underneath the background to be the alpha mat of that layer. And that's gonna create that cutout effect. Now, once we've got that, if we come back to our main composition, you can see that's automatically been updated. And then to create another letter, all I have to do is then duplicate that letter. I can then double click it and I can create by double clicking, just type out my next letter here. Then if I drag that into my composition, I can then reposition these two text items here and position them here on screen. And I've got two text layers now that are repeating themselves. I've now laid all of these text layers out on my timeline using those same steps. And what you can start to do is offset these 
so that they look a little bit different. So drag some of these in a little bit closer and then some you can leave where they are. And what this will do is create a bit more of that offset effect. So it's kind of, they're all a bit different rather than looking exactly the same. So what you can do with these is now start to create a null object and I'm gonna parent all of these to that null. And this will be the controller for controlling the scale and the animation of the text. So what I did with mine is hit S to bring up the scale keyframes, created a keyframe there. And then I kind of created one here, just created a little bit of a scale in and then have maybe one here, move these across and then scale out or the size up of those back of that background. Now with those layers, what I can do is create a bit of an easy ease in, and then I can also create an easy ease out. I can also go into the graph editor here and just kind of smooth this right out. So that's gonna kind of create a bit more of that movement that looks a bit more natural. And if you're interested in learning more about how the graph editor works, then you definitely wanna check out my Animation Master course. And there's a link for that in the description below. And in that course, I run through everything about how to create animations just like this. And I go through exactly how to create smooth movements using the graph editor, which is a really important part of the animation process. I also show you how to make over 50 different animations. And I show you right from a beginner up to an intermediate, as well as going through my entire process of how I create animations from scratch. Now, if you're interested in that, then definitely check that out via the link in the description below. Now, another thing I did was also animate the individual layers with, or the letters with, different scale and position keyframes. So I created a, just a, a position and a scale keyframe by hitting P and then S on my keyboard, creating a keyframe there at the start. I then scaled them up and I moved this just across very slightly. And then I created another position and a scale keyframe so that it scales back down to 100 and then I positioned it again back by moving it into that position there. So I could do this again by just showing you if I create a scale keyframe by hitting S on the keyboard, I'm gonna create a position or scale keyframe there. I'm gonna create another one here. And with this one, I'm gonna scale it up. So I kind of create a bit of this animation of these different letters that look something like that. So what you can also do is if I hit P on the keyboard, I can also create a position hit U to bring up those keyframes, and then just create a bit of a position here and off-center this. So it kind of animates in from a different position as it moves into the final animation. So you can see, here's all the different keyframes. I've done that for each of the letters and it kind of creates this uh, unique effect of each of the letters sort of being animated in. Now, the last part of this is creating the background effect. So there's a couple of parts to this. The first is I'm just gonna create a new solid. And for this, I'm just gonna also scale this down, make it quite dark, drag this to the back. I'm then going to duplicate that layer, come up to the layer down to the solid settings. And I wanna make this one a little bit lighter here. And then I can create basically a mask which sits over the top. So something like this, animate this across. And to this layer, what I can also do is just add a drop shadow by just adding perspective drop shadow, move it out into the background, scale up the distance and give this a little bit of softness. So something like that. You can always adjust the background color if you want it a little bit lighter or darker. That kind of helps separate those edges. And the other thing I did was also add a bit of a grid. So I created a new solid called this one grid, drag this down to the back. And then I just added the grid effect under generate and then just kind of scaled this up using the width and height. And then just drag this down a little bit here to make it a bit lighter. And you can also drag down on that opacity a little bit more see-through. And you can even duplicate this layer and drag it up. And then you've got another grid which you can parent to that null object and that's gonna create another grid which sits over the top. Now we only want that grid on the top to be seen on that background or this cutout. We can add a little effect called set matte. And this is something that I talk a lot about in my animation master course, but basically what you can do is use this to basically set this as that dark solid, set this to be the alpha channel 
and then make sure that effects and mask is selected and it's going to kind of isolate it to that layer. Now you can animate that background layer by hitting S on the keyboard, creating a scale keyframe and then have this animate in. Or you could just parent it to that null object to have it sort of animate in. Again, you can also right click on that keyframe, add easy ease in and then create a bit of a smooth graph effect, kind of have it animating in like that. And the other thing that I also did is, is I added this background which sits over the top. Now this background is actually a number of different layers and I'm not gonna show you how to make this because I already have a tutorial going step by step showing you exactly how I made this and I'll also add a link to that in the description below. And you can basically just watch that and that'll show you how to make that background. And I just added that straight over the top and also used a set mat, which allowed me to isolate it to just that outline of that layer. And that's the last step then to creating this finished effect. Now, if you loved this video and got a lot of value from it, then definitely consider subscribing to this channel for more videos just like this. If you like this video, you can also consider giving it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And you can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.